Hi, this is PD at Bergsburg Arcade at BergsburgArcade.com and this is tutorial 190. Now we just finished getting the offset uh, working on our hair and the next thing I wanted to do was actually start having it load our initial hair up when we start the game. If we notice when we start up we're always bald and originally that's actually what I wanted uh, but then I realized that our first uh, hair in every set if we just go back is just the eyebrows. So the guy is bald. So we kind of always want to have eyebrows on all our characters so we go over to the next set, you know, eyebrows are a little bit different. So let's have it low that initial one. Now I know eventually down the road, I'm going to want to make this class static. And like we only ever need one instance of this class. We don't need to be instantiating it. And for those that don't quite understand what static classes are versus uh, classes that aren't static, um, well, when they're not static, you have to create one. Where a static one is basically just always there. I will get into that a little bit more probably when we start going over our game settings again because I'm probably going to do a bit of a rewrite on that. There's a few things that I've either just learned since then or going through it I just want to do different. But let's go ahead and start getting it to load our initial hair. Now right here is where we're loading our hair mesh and I actually still want to keep that private because I only want this script to ever call that. Uh, but I do want to have a function that is public. And it's not going to return anything for now. And I'm just going to call it load, or I want it to load the initial hair. So like the one underscore zero, or one, one underscore one. So I was thinking of something along the lines of a reset button. So when the guy hits the reset button, it automatically goes back to the initial one. Uh, but it is the initial hair. For, so for now, I'm just going to call it load initial hair. And all I'm going to do is just call that one method where we load the hair mesh. Uh, that was simple enough. Uh, we'll come over to our player model customization. And I have the actual creating of uh, our hair object down here and instead of up here, just because it's just easier for me not to have to keep scrolling up there. Eventually, I will have to move it up there. Uh, but I have another variable I want to put that goes with the hair and I'm just going to try to keep them together for now. So this will be private. It's a type bool and I'm just going to call it uh, loaded hair. No, I should just call it reset hair. Because eventually I'd like to put a button like I said, on the screen that does this, and I'll probably be putting it in the actual hair class. Uh, but for now, let's just uh, put it here. And we'll start this off by equaling false. And I'm just going to come down here and just check that value. So if not reset hair, I forgot my underscore. So basically, if reset hair is equal to false, uh, we're going to call that method on our hair. So hair dot, uh, I think I called it load initial. There we go. So we'll just save that off. There's no errors. Let's start it up. And he's starting up with his eyebrows, but it looks like we forgot an important line in there. So if it's equal to false, we're going to call this load initial hair. Well, it's always going to be false because we're never changing it. And the reason why I noticed that is if you look at his eyebrows, you have this Z fighting, or you have more than one game object occupying the same area. So if we actually went and took a look, obviously it looks funny on screen, but if we actually go in and take a look at it, it's just adding, if you notice this little bar is getting shorter and shorter, and it's because it's just adding more and more hair ones. So what we have to do is put some parentheses here because there's now more than one command. I just set your reset hair to equal true. And I probably actually got these values wrong. I probably should start it off at equaling true. It just makes a little more sense. And when we click the button or Later when we click the button, we're going to set it to false. So 
Let's save that off. There's no errors. Now when we start it up, there's only one set here when we start up. So we'll stop that. And th this is pretty much all I wanted to do for this video is just have it load up the initial hair. Now, like I said, later on we will be incorporating this functionality into our hair, but I want to make it a static class first before I really start filling it out. And, well, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.